Hi guys, I'm Céline, a French architect and a trainer. And today we're going to see what are great concepts and how great concepts can give great emotions to people. Remember, in the previous video, I was talking about the three methods that architects generally use to find great concepts. And I criticized a little bit these methods. In this video today, we're going to see how three famous and great architects use these methods to develop great concept. So let's start now. Okay, so let's talk about the first project. This project is called the Fun and Block and it was designed by NL Architects. It's located in Amsterdam. In this project, we are going to see how an analysis can bring to great concept and so to great emotions. So, as you can see, this project is really particular because of this deformation of the roof. It's a residential project. And the project has to be built in a special zone. It was a, it's, a, it's a park called the Fun and Park. And so, the, ar the architect had some requirements and apart from these requirements and their analysis of the site, they succeeded in designing a great project. So first of all, they had to respect a certain height for the project, it's this game. They tried to divide the project in 10 apartments, but then they thought about this height and they said, instead of doing three story and a uh, and at the center a green roof we're gonna create two story and a half this is this can and we're gonna create a, a green roof on all the surface then we're gonna divide this volume in 10 apartments and create a path but as they are as they were as they were looking at the site they saw that it was not really interesting to create a straight path like this because it will give a, view, a direct view on a wall it would be more interesting to create a dynamic path which create a continuity between the exterior paths here and the interior of the volume then they started to make a deformation of the roof based on the sun enlightenment and as the ang some angles were lower than the opposite, it permit to create an open view. So at the end, they redivide, they redivided the volume in 10 apartments, okay? And what is really interesting in this project, quite magical in fact, is that all the apartments are, are different. This is something that can be hard when you are designing a residential project with apartments because most of the time we don't want to lose time and we do the same apartments but here all the apartments are different they don't have the same surface but they have the same volume some apartments have some patios the patios were dug in this rounded roof and you, as you can see from the exterior the the building give emotions because it's impressive but from inside people living in these apartments have also emotion they feel something different because they are living in apartments which are really original the plan of the roof and the plan of the ground floor as you see this corridor that we have told about and uh, it gives access to all the 10 apartments the corridor in reality and this will be a succession of sections in which you will see the different apartments. So let's start. As you can see, you have some classical apartments on the ground floor, but each apartment uh, is different from one another because uh, in some apartments you have patios, in some other one you have not. In some apartments there are variation of eight. A view from inside um, an apartment located at the ground floor as you can see the curvature of the roof is visible inside which is really interesting 
And so we are finished with this project in which I prove you that an analyze, a good analysis of a site can bring to great concept and can bring to great emotions. Second project, I'm sure you know it. It's The Mountain by Big Bjork Ingers Architect. And so in this project, we're gonna see the method 2 that I've told about in the previous video. This method, what it was, to observe the nature around you and to take inspiration from it. And so in this project, the Archangels take inspiration of the concept of a mountain. But what is really interesting is that, in fact, he didn't just take the shape of a mountain and put some apartments in it. It would have been ridiculous and this is not architecture. In fact, he analyzes the concept of a mountain and readapts it in architecture and it was a really complex process. As you can see, the project is located in Denmark in the city of Orestadt. And so, at the beginning, um, it's a residential project, so uh, he had some surfaces to respect from for housing and for the parking. He decided to put the parking below housing, which is quite classical, but he put a slope. Then he created a multi-story parking and on the housing surface he applied a grid which permitted him to create different apartments. And so, as you can see on this section, this project was not simple to create. He had to think about how to bear this, uh, all these apartments uh, from the parking. What gives emotions to people is this parking. If we just look at it, this parking is a piece of architecture in itself because it's a complete re reinterpretation of what a parking is. Uh, usually you see parking are just boring and dark places. Here this parking is colored and it's not a place you try to avoid. Then the apartments that he created making a kind of stair effect permit also to give emotions to people to to bring them a kind of comfort because each apartment has some terraces and has a great view on the environment, as you can see. So in this project, we have seen that it's possible to take inspiration from the nature, from objects around us, but we have to readapt it in an architectural way so that we can create great emotions to people and not creating great shapes. Okay, so let's talk about the third project, Yusuara Museum by Kengo Kuma. And in this project, we're going to talk about the third method to find great concept. This method that I called the copy-paste method. So you see, in this project, Kengo Kuma has developed a really beautiful carpentry. And the, the project is located in Japan, between a spa and an hotel. And in fact, Kengo Kuma in his project, and in this project particularly, has taken inspiration from the traditional and old Japanese carpentry. And this carpentry is based on a specific woodworking joinery, which doesn't use any glue, any nails. This is its main particularity. And so, when you are looking at some details like that, it's quite incredible that all this system can work without any nails, okay? So, Kengo Kuma, what he did, in, in fact, he reinterpreted this traditional carpentry, this technique, to create great effects on the carpentry, to make, to create a kind of pattern and to create a special atmosphere. This is not just a classic carpentry. It didn't just copy the traditional carpentry and paste it in his project. He used his brain and he imagined a new kind of carpentry. As you can see, this is the traditional framing in Japanese carpentry. And when we are looking at the project, we can still see that he used the, techni the technique of joinery, but in a modern way and Kengo Kuma has become famous because of this ability to take inspiration from its culture, the Japanese tradition, and to modernize them, not just copy them, okay? 
So now uh, let's see how these architects have succeeded in finding great concepts using the classic methods. Okay? Generally, you see that to create an idea you need some inspiration and you take inspiration from, from picture, books, uh, your experience, your emotions. And this can generate an idea in your brain. And from this idea you will create your architectural project. But what we often forget is that there are some external influence in this process which uh, prevents you most of the time to have great ideas. This external influence can be uh, your teacher saying you what is good or what is bad, other architects who have told you that it's not good for you to take inspiration from uh, philosophy, for example, it's not good to take inspiration from painting, you should look at this or look at that. And, and so from this external influence you have forgotten what is really important in fact to create great concept and to give great emotions to people and what is that you have forgotten who you are in fact and this is how these architects that we have seen have succeeded in finding great ideas and also giving great emotion to people because they know who they are, they have developed their own method and from the outside people can easily say well this architect is like that, this architect thinks like that, they have their own personality, their own way of working which permit them to be less influenced by external influence and to avoid just using the copy-paste method. Okay, if you take NL architects, what is interesting in their work is that they, they have this ability to reinterpret the existing models. By models, I, I mean, well, what is a house? What is an apartment? Usually, this, an apartment is like that, but we are gonna innovate a little bit. It's what we saw with the Fun and Block project. They work on volumetry. A very interesting work on volumetry and their work is full of boldness. Björk Ingers, big architect, he has developed a great identity. Each project he made, you can already know that he made it because he has succeeded in creating this identity. In this project we can see that he has a vision of architecture. Architecture should be something fun, you see, in this project. I think he always thinks about how to give fun to people. And uh, he developed an architecture which is innovative and impressive. And Ken Gokuma also has a great and unique identity. He has taken inspiration from his culture and he, is a, he has succeeded in modernizing all the tradition of the Japanese architecture. He used wood really often in his architecture and through the time, through its experience, he has succeeded also in creating a beautiful atmospheres in the spaces that he've created. So, who are you? What kind of architect are you? What are your values? Why did you choose to become an architect? This question may seem simple, but it's a fundamental question. If you want to develop your own ideas, if you want to develop great concepts, you have to know who you are and how you want to practice architecture. I'm actually working on the course and the first module will be dedicated to this question to help you developing your own way of thinking architecture. By the time I will develop the course, I can still help you through our platform. You can book a consultancy and together we will see what are your strengths, what is your style and how you can work on it. So I hope this video will help you in your next works. Don't hesitate to ask me questions. I'm leaving you now guys and I see you in the next course. Bye!